Welcome. This is a uh, 2019 paper three practical. Uh, so let us go inside and check what we were provided with. So this is the this is how the paper was looking like. Uh, you were provided with solution A, solution B, and solution C. You are required to determine the rate of reaction between aqueous ion 2 sulfate solution A and aqueous potassium iodide solution B. So there was a very long uh, procedure there as you can see. Uh, the temperature of the mixture and then here you are supposed to fill. So I, I will just give the, if you have time you can use these details to To, to draw the graph as you can see there was no qualitative uh, there was no quantitative analysis there was no titration this year 2019 so this is what they were provided with the practical needed somebody to follow instructions and then use the knowledge of drawing the graph uh, to determine what they were asking to determine so I'm not going through this question I will go straight into qualitative analysis 2019. You are provided with solid P. Cut out the following tests and record the observations and the inferences in the spaces provided. <clears throat> Place about one third of solid P in a dry test tube and heat it strongly test any gases produced with red litmus paper so this red litmus paper must be moist you have to make this litmus paper wet by using distilled water <coughs> because otherwise it will not you will not see any change formed so before even you go through the question first you have to identify whether this question is uh, inorganic chemistry or with this organic qualitative analysis how do you do that you go through the questions for example here we have to the first portion add a solution uh, add aqueous sodium hydroxide so the reagent here is sodium hydroxide you go to the next one add aqueous barium nitrate so barium nitrate now up to this point now you realize that you are doing inorganic qualitative analysis therefore you know where there's nothing like double bond you are going to write here this one is inorganic purely so what will be the observation <coughs> so after heating and testing for the gases this was the observation red litmus paper changes blue that was the first observation and then white fumes uh, condensed are formed white fumes are formed so from here you can say that red litmus paper changes blue it means that the gas that was produced is a basic gas. That why, that's why now the red litmus paper is changing too. So you can simply say, because we know ammonia is the only gas which is, so the salt which was there must be ammonium ion present. Or you can write basic gas produced. Place the remaining amount of solid P in a, in a boiling tube. Add about 15 centimeters cube of distilled water and shake to dissolve the solid. Use about 2 centimeters cube portion of the solution in test tube for each of the following test 1 to Roman 4. To the first portion, to the first portion of the solution, add aqueous sodium hydroxide so we are adding sodium hydroxide 
And then what is the observation? The observation is that no white PPT, no white PPT is formed. So if no white PPT is formed, we know for sure that the ZAP, that is the zinc two ions, zinc two positive, lead two positive, aluminium three positive are absent. That one we know very well that they are absent. If they could be absent, then a white precipitate would be observed. But now there is no white PPT. Now what could be present? We know very well. If we are adding sodium hydroxide and a white, there is no white PPT, then simply it means that sodium ions, potassium ions, and ammonium ions are, are present. To the second portion, to the second portion of the solution, add two or three drops of aqueous barium nitrate. So when we are adding barium nitrate, even before you do the test, you should know you should expect a white precipitate or no white precipitate. Because inside there, if there is a sulfate, a sulfite or a carbonate, it will form a white precipitate with barium. You should know all sorts of barium that are insoluble. So the observation is that no white PPT formed. No white PPT formed. So if there is no white PPT formed, what does it mean? It means that the sulfate, which could form lead barium sulfate, the sulfite, which could form form which could form barium sulfite, and the carbonate are absent. So sulfite, sulfate, sulfite, carbonate are absent because there is no white PPT. To the third portion of the solution, add two to three drops of lead nitrate, warm the mixture. So here we are going to make two observations. After adding two drops, what happened? After warming, what happened? So you should know once you have to be told to warm, observation expected you have to make observation twice. So after adding lead nitrate, two drops, white PPT is formed. A white PPT is formed. White PPT is formed. So we know a white uh, lead will form a white precipitate with the sulfate, with the carbonate, with the sulfite, sorry, sulfite, with the sulfite, two minus, and with the chloride. So, lead sulfate, lead carbonate, lead sulfite, lead chloride, all of them are white precipitates. But remember, even uh, bromine ions, bromide, lead bromide is a white precipitate. Now, remember in the previous inference that we wrote, here in Roman 2, we say that the sulfate, sulfite, and the carbonate is absent. So there is no way they will reappear again in the next test. In Roman 3, they will not reappear there. Therefore, this one, if they are absent here, the subsequent test, they will not be there. Mark that. Therefore, we are not going to write the sulfate, the carbonate, or the sulfite present here. We are going to write that the chloride uh, even before we write the inference, what happened? Did it dissolve to form a color on warming? Yes. So, a white PPT is formed, which dissolve on warming. So that one confirms that the it formed lead chloride. Lead chloride is the one, or lead chloride is the one which dissolves. On warming, therefore, lead is present. Uh, that means that the chloride ion is present, or the bromide ion is present. We will not write these ones that they are present because in the previous we have said they are not there. Yeah. To 
through solidity in the test tube, add about 2 cm of distilled water, shake and label this solution chlorine water. Add all the chlorine water to the fourth portion of the solution, shake the mixture and then add 3 drops of starch solution, starch solution. Here you need to understand the test for starch which you run, which is taught in form 1, test for starch. How do you test for starch? So test tubes, okay, suppose this procedure, you should know this. Into a clean test tube, put to a mirror of the food substance. This is the food substance which is uh, uh, suspected to be starch. Add three drops of iodine solution. So iodine is used to test for starch. Now if the starch is present, if the color changes from brown to blue, black indicates the presence of starch. So now if when you have this knowledge, then you will be able to answer the question that is testing us on starch. Ah, no blue, black, no blue, black, cara, cara formed with the starch. So if no blue cara that is starch, if no blue cara that is formed and we know we use iodine, if there is if there is, we use iodine to test for starch, if the cara does not change to blue, black, then it indicates that iodine is absent. Iodine ions is absent absent. So this one is also is correct. What if another, the colorless solution, now the positive uh, observation is that the colorless solution changes yellow. If it changes yellow, then it means bromide ions are present. So like I've always advised, take what is positive and leave around what is not there. But uh, this one is, both of them are correct. Remember, whenever you see starch, they are testing for the presence of an iodine ions because we know from biology, uh, iodine is used for the test of starch. Give the formula of the ions present in solid P. Uh, the cation is ammonium ion. The anion is bromine ions. You are provided with liquid Q, carry out the following test and record the observations and inferences in the space provided. Place two, um, so we have been given a liquid this time around. Place two drops of liquid Q on our watch glass. Ignite the liquid with a Bunsen burner flame using a watch glass. Then the observation is that the liquid Q, liquid Q burns with a yellow with a yellow flame one is with a yellow flame that one confirms the unsaturated organic compound the unsaturated is the double bond and the triple bond present or you can write unsaturated uh, compound present and saturated organic compound present place about two centimeters of liquid Q in a test tube add about two centimeters of distilled water and shake so here we want to see whether the liquids are miscible or immiscible whether they form one layer or two layers so the observation is that two layers are formed or you can also say that Q is immiscible in water. If it forms two layers, then it means that it is immiscible. So if it is immiscible, then it is an anipora, an anipora organic compound present. If it is immiscible, then it is pora. If it forms one layer, it is polar organic compound present.
to about 2 cm of liquid Q in a test tube add all the solid uh, sodium hydrogen carbonate provided then no evaporescence if there is no evaporescence There is no evaporation and it means that the uh, it means that uh, the alkanoic acids are absent. The alkanoic acids are absent. To about two centimeters of Q of liquid Q in a test tube, add two to three drops of bromine water, and then bromine water is decarbonized. bromine water is decarbonized by after adding two drops then it means the unsaturated organic compounds are present uh, also this one orange acidified potassium dichromate remains orange if it remains orange then the alcohol is absent